Hi students, welcome in chemistry classes. I am Priyanka Jain and you are watching videos of analytical chemistry. In our last lecture, we have studied about atomic absorption spectroscopy. I hope you will like that video. And in our next video, we have seen the questions, various type of questions that has been asked on the particular topic. Okay. Now we are seeing the atomic emission spectroscopy, one of the very important topic. Here we will see its principle, instrumentation, method of working and its advantages. Okay. So let's start our lecture. Atomic Emission Spectroscopy. In general, in short, we call it AES. Okay. Actually, it is a type of analytical technique that is used for qualitative as well as quantitative analysis. Qualitative identification means if in a sample, several types of elements are present, then they can be identified. Okay. And quantitative analysis means if we have given even the traces of the elements in the sample, then we can find out their ppm level to their percentage. Okay. Actually, it is a multi-element technique. Multi-element technique that can be used to detect metals, metalloids and non-metals simultaneously means if in a sample, Several types of elements are present, either they are metals or metalloids or non-metals, they can be simultaneously detected. In one time, we can detect several elements simultaneously. Okay, so how this technique works? Firstly, see its principle. See, actually, principle can be understood from its name. What is its name? Atomic Emission Spectroscopy. So, basically, it is a spectroscopic technique, first of all. It is a spectroscopic technique that is used for the analysis. Secondly, it is based on the emissions by the atoms. What is the emission by the atoms? We know that atoms can absorb the light. When we are imposing it to the radiation, they can absorb the light and they can go to the excited state. Once they go to the excited state, they will have short lifetime here. So, they again go to the its ground state and then emit the light. Okay, this light that they are emitting, this emitted light will have a particular frequency, particular wavelength and that is unique for that particular element. Suppose we are taking sodium, then the sodium will emit the radiation of a particular wavelength and that we can identify. This is the basic fundamental principle between this. Okay, so now this emitted light is passed through the monochromator. This monochromator will select that particular wavelength, okay, and then it go to the detector and detector will make its signal. So, this is the fundamental principle behind it. Now, see its instrumentation. The instrumentation of atomic emission spectroscopy is same as that of the atomic absorption spectroscopy, but one very big difference is that there is no radiation source. No radiation source is used here. In that case, we have used the hollow cathode lamp, okay, but here we are using no source, okay. So, in atomic emission spectroscopy, we does not need a radiation source. In atomic emission, the sample is atomized and the analyte atoms are excited to higher levels. So, just what we have to do here, this is the nebulizer that is connected to the sample solution. Okay, this is the sample solution and this nebulizer is connected to it. It is converting to aerosol and this is going to the flame. This is the flame. Okay, and here in this flame, these atoms are now going to the higher temperature. It means this solution is going to the nebulizer. Okay, and then this nebulizer converting it to the aerosol and then this is coming to the flame flame, in flame it is converted to the high temperature atoms. These atoms get excited to the higher state and then this is passed to the monochromator. Okay, and then from the monochromator it is going to the detector. Okay, so we are seeing one by one each of the part of the instrument. First part is the excitation source. Excitation source may be of the different type in the AES. It may be a flame. It may be an alternating current arc or AC arc 
or it may be a DC arc, it may be an AC spark, or we can use direct current plasma, or we can use microwave current plasma, or we can use inductively coupled plasma. Okay, the most important technique here is the inductively coupled plasma technique. So, first of all, see what is flame excitation source. Actually, this flame is used whenever the molecules does not require very high temperature. Whenever there is no need of high temperature, then we can use the flame to excite the atoms to the higher state. Actually, the sample is present in the solution form. This is spread into the flame. Okay, and a mixture of fuel and oxidants is added to it. Generally, we are taking a mixture of acetylene plus O2. This mixture of acetylene and O2 is creating a temperature of 3000 degree centigrade. Okay, secondly, the second source may be a AC spark. This is the another most commonly used source. Here, in this case, what is we are using a high voltage, a high voltage of the range of 10 to 50 kilowatt is created across the electrodes. And as a result of this, what we are getting? We are getting a spark. So, this spark is actually our excitation source. This method has several advantages. First of all, in this method, less material is consumed. Secondly, this method is reproducible. Several times we can use the AC arc. And thirdly, we can use the high concentration solution even. Even the high concentration solution can be used. And another important thing is that heating effect is very less. So when the heating effect is less, this method can also be used for low melting point materials. The third type is the high temperature plasma. First of all, understand what is a plasma. Plasma is actually the electrically conducting gaseous mixture containing high concentration of cations and electrons. This mixture is known as the plasma. So, the most common technique of the plasma is the inductively coupled plasma technique. Inductively coupled plasma means ICP AES, ICP AES technique, inductively coupled plasma technique. This is the most important and most advantageous technique. Okay, in this technique, the plasma is generated with the help of a device that is called torch. Okay, now the next part of the instrumentation is the sample holder. Sample holder is used to introduce the sample. Third is the monochromator. As I have told you, monochromator is needed to select one of the wavelength out of the several wavelengths given to us. And monochromator may be either prism or it may be grating. The fourth part of the instrumentation is the detector. Detectors may be of two types. Either we, we can use photomultipliers tube or we can use a photographic plate. But actually it is fine that this photographic plate has more advantages over the photomultiplier tube. Besides this, we use the nebulizer. What is the function of nebulizer? The nebulizer is used to convert the sample solution to the fine aerosol. So, this is whole about the instrumentation. Now, we come to its working. The working process is similar to just you have seen in the case of the atomic absorption spectroscopy. Here also we are taking a sample solution beaker. Okay, here this is the sample solution. This sample solution is now connected to a nebulizer. Now, what is doing by the nebulizer? Actually, nebulizer suck up this solution, okay, and convert it to the fine aerosol. This solution that is in the form of liquid is now converted to fine aerosol. This fine aerosol now go to the atomizer, flame atomizer we are using here. This is the flame atomizer, okay, here this is the flame. This is flame atomizer. Here, the high temperature is created with the help of a mixture of acetylene plus O2. Okay, here a mixture of acetylene plus O2 is mixed with this aerosol. Okay, now this aerosol is converted to atoms. Okay, and these atoms goes to the excited state because here the temperature is very high. This will go to the 
excited state and then they further returns to the ground state and they will emit the radiation this radiation is passed through the monochromator monochromator will select a particular wavelength and then this light goes to the detector detector may be photographic plate or photomultiplier tube this will detect the signal and form its spectrograph okay so in last we are getting the spectrograph this is the whole working of the atomic emission spectroscopy now see its advantages this technique is highly advanced ts first of all it is highly specific this technique have high advantages over the atomic absorption spectroscopy this is highly specific this is very sensitive techniques secondly this can also be used to detect the metalloids metalloids can even be detected this can not be done with the help of atomic absorption spectroscopy okay and then we can use sample in the solid form or in the liquid form solid or liquid both the forms can be used and one of the very important thing is that it can be used for more than two elements and at last we are getting rapid results with the help of this technique okay so this is whole about the atomic emission spectroscopy i hope you will like this video meet you in the next video and there we will see different type of questions from the analytical chemistry okay if you are liking these videos please share this please subscribe our channel please comment us thank you